Okay, that took just a couple of seconds, but I had to slide the screen into the recording window so that you could see it. And in the advanced view, you'll see the different nodes that we created. First, here's the approval node. Second is the request for information node. Third is that approval node. And then there are a few nodes that have gone off the side of our screen, and I'll slide over and show you those. And that is our approved script and our rejected script, which are populated by default in Identity Manager. And then the end of our workflow. Any one of these nodes can be changed or, or modified here. And as you can see from this selection over here on the left, we have a lot of different um, nodes that we can actually drag out into our workspace. And you can see we have a few additional ones. When we did Simple View, we only had Approval, Mail, and RFI. And now we have Operation, we have Loops, we can add in extensions and scripts, we can even create a work order so that uh, it can create a work order for a, like a manual service. And we have sub-processes where we can create a workflow that we can reuse in additional workflows as we go along. The disadvantage to using the simple mode is that our nodes don't get named uh, in something that makes sense to the human reader. However, if we open up these nodes, you'll see that they are named appropriately, and we can modify them, which is what I'd like to do. So I've just double-clicked on this, and of course it's popping up outside my window, so I'll drag it back in. And you can see here that the activity ID is just given a random name that it picked, and I'm going to just create this one and say it's a manager approval, so that I can read it when it's on this screen. See, that looks a lot better, and I can actually drag it over where I can get a few more of these things in. The RFI, I'm going to go and change this one to say ask IT for info and I'm going to say OK so that makes sense to me as I read that here and let's drop this down here and the next approval is going to be the ask the owner for approval. So we're going to ask the owner in this case, remember when we created that. So now we'll ask the owner and then we'll bring these scripts back over onto our screen where we can say, well, if everybody has approved it, uh, we know what's going to happen. If we have had several e rejections, we'll see what happens here. And now we can see where the end of our workflow is. And I'll try to scroll this back onto the screen for everybody to see. So now what happens is we start in our workflow process. We go first to the manager for approval. If the manager rejects it, it's going to go back here to the rejected and then end. The next thing that's going to happen, if the manager did approve, it will go to the RFI and ask for information. And if the information is provided, we'll continue on and ask the owner for approval. And if not, it will go simply to the end of our workflow. We may want to change that and have it go to the rejected mode, um, but this is uh, entirely up to you how you design this. After the RFI has been done, we ask the owner for approval, and if they say yes, we continue on and approve. If not, we reject. That's really a very simple way of doing this. If you have multiple people that need to approve a specific request and you want them all to approve, what we can do is we can drag out additional nodes, and as you can see, it's yellow because it hasn't been connected to anything. We can double click it and fill out some information. Let's say this one's the additional approver. And this participant is going to be, as you can see here, all of our different types. And in this case, we're going to say this is going to be uh, somebody in a, uh, an organizational role and we're able to select that organizational role here uh, and we're just going to say this is going to be let's say all of the accounting auditors so the auditor has to approve this uh, we can see that the escalation participant um, could be um, the system administrator like we used earlier or we could set it to another person uh, however we like. And our escalation limit here we have much more granularity on changing that and how we set things up uh, for the way the flow of this particular request happens. There's also tabs for notification and action task, text and those are things that will show up as we actually get the request in the approval 
uh, process and the code that gets passed along the path. So let's talk about that here for a second. So immediately I see this new approval node, but it's not connected to anything. So the first thing I need to do is connect it up uh, in some way so that we have, um, you know, a, a way to uh, flow into this approval. Now that this approval has been connected uh, from the start, what will happen is we come in immediately and ask the manager for approval and ask the additional approval for approver for approval, and we need to do something. Well, if they reject, we want to send a note over to the rejected side, and if they approve, we want to pass it down to the um, RFI note. So we've connected it up, and let me clean this up just a little bit. Uh, so that we can kind of see how things go. And there we go. The next thing you might ask is, well, what happens if the manager rejects and the additional approver approves? Well, in this case, what we're, we're counting on is both have to say yes. So let's look at this RFI node. Let's open up the RFI node. And in the RFI node, the join or the input, notice this little node coming in, must be an AND. What that means is both of these must be uh, traversed in an affirmative manner or a, an approve in order for this to happen. So that's great. We see that there. And over here on our return rejected, what we want to do is we want to say OR for our join type. Because either one of these says no, we're done. So this approval will say, I say no, Bingo, and then the rejected says, oh, I got one, that's enough, and continue and complete the process. If this one says yes, the RFI doesn't continue until the second one says yes, because we have this AND join coming in here. So as you can see, creating workflows can become very complex, and we can really create almost anything we'd like. If we can't do it with these base defined nodes, we can add loops to run through for a certain number of people uh, approving or a certain number of times. We can add in scripts. We can also create our own Java extensions that we can write and drop in. In most cases, the default nodes or scripts will be sufficient uh, to create your workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and update this and save it and then we'll go back to our original screen. So give me a second because it's going to pop out of our screen and I'll be right back through the magic of pause. Okay, I selected OK and it popped back down into the main win window and I'll select OK here and that will apply my new change to this workflow for us so that we can now have this workflow saved and available for us to use. We'll associate this workflow with a provisioning policy in our next video.